CataractCoach.com. Today we're doing a divide and conquer technique. My residents often ask me to post a video of divide and conquer, but since it's a technique that I don't normally do, I didn't really have one available. So today I thought, let's record a video of divide and conquer. This is otherwise a routine case. Residents like to start with divide and conquer and then advance on to other techniques later. So let's do an entire case complete with divide and conquer. So we're going to start off with the main incision here. I tell residents to make a slight groove here, right on the uh, epithelium. Advance the blade now, and we should enter, the tip should pierce decimase when that line hits the epithelium right there. So that's a very appropriate tunnel length, nice square incision. Time for a capsorexis. Now for divide and conquer, you do want to have a nice intact round capsorexis. There is going to be a little stress on the capsular bag when we divide the uh, nucleus into halves and then quadrants. There is that outward push on the capsule. And we want an intact rexus because that circle is strong and it won't rip outwards. Also for divide and conquer, we're going to be rotating the nucleus a lot. So you definitely want good hydrodissection. So there's a couple fluid waves. We'll go in the other direction. The nucleus must be able to rotate prior to starting a dividing hunger technique. So take your time here. Let's see, is that enough? Mm, doesn't really rotate so well, so we'll do more hydrodissection. We must have good hydrodissection. There it is, there's a good rotation. I like to recoat the uh, uh, corneal endothelium with more viscoelastic. This is a dispersive viscoelastic. A little bit of patient movement here. We're just taking our time to calm the patient down, maybe give a little more IV sedation. Now ready for the FACO probe. This is our sculpt setting, so power's in the middle somewhere, 50% for this nucleus. If it's very dense, you can go higher. Low flow, 25 cc's a minute. Low vacuum, about 100 millimeters of mercury. There's the first groove. We go deeper in that first groove, and now the sleeve hits the nucleus. So we have to widen it up, and then widen deeper. And now go in the deepest part of that central groove now, and that's enough. Now we're going to rotate the nucleus about 90 degrees, and we're going to continue with another groove. So this also debulks the center here. It's important that you make these grooves so that they're uh, very clean and they have nice edges, nice walls there, because we're going to put instruments in that. Rotate it another 90 degrees, continue this original groove, that's good, and rotate it another 90 degrees, and now we've got all our grooves sculpted. All that's left now is to split the nucleus. So put the two instruments here deep in the groove and push apart. Good. Rotate it 90 degrees. Instruments deep in the groove and push apart. Rotate it again 90 degrees. Instruments deep in the groove and push apart. And rotate a little bit more. And then finally coming back here. I can deepen the groove and push apart. So now we have four complete quadrants. We'll go to high vacuum setting, high flow, still keeping the phaco power about the same, and we can vacuum on a piece and bring it centrally and emulsify that one piece. We can now go to the next piece, bring it centrally. So most of the emulsification of the piece is done away from the capsule, bringing the nuclear chunk to the center of the pupil at about the iris plane. Taking our time, again, removing the nuclear quadrant here. And now we're left with just one quadrant in the bag. There's the last quadrant, bring it up. And we glue emulsify it, chopper in the safe position to protect the posterior capsule, prevent it from coming forwards. And we've pretty much cleaned up everything here. That looks great. A little tiny piece left, there it is. Ready for our irrigation aspiration to remove the lens cortex. This video is also shown in real time and also unedited start to finish, so there are no cuts here. So you can watch you know, the, the procedure exactly as it happens. Cortex removal, again, try a circumferential manner, grabbing under the rex's edge for at least a couple clock hours and then moving it circumferentially. And we'll clean that up very nicely. Last bit of uh, lens cortex coming out. Oop, there's the capsule bag. Be careful there. A little bit of polishing. Try aspirate some of this uh, material from the undersurface of the anterior lens capsule. 
That looks beautiful. And in this case, we're going to put a single piece acrylic lens in the bag. We're going to fill the capsule bag now with the cohesive viscoelastic. This one will be easier to remove at the end. In this case, there's not quite enough viscoelastic left because uh, the technician used it a little excessively. And so the eye is a little soft here. Normally, I'd like to have a little bit bigger fill of the anterior chamber. So hold on to the eye. You can see the globe's a little soft. Advance the lens. Goes under the nasal rexus. There's the optic. And again, we just now need to dial the lens into the capsule bag. So again, the AC is shallow here because of lack of viscoelastic. So I'm going to use the spatula end to get it, be able to get above the optic. There we go. And we'll get this to open up appropriately. And we'll ensure that both haptics and the optic are completely within the capsule bag. Time to remove the viscoelastic. So we'll get the IA probing in. Going to go underneath the optic first, lift it up, remove that viscoelastic. And then come in front of it and remove the remainder of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. We can for sure see that the optic is completely overlapped by the rexus for 360 degrees. And the lens is well centered in the capsule bag. All that remains now is for us to uh, seal up the incisions and call this a day. So there you go, a nice divide and conquer technique. Certainly an appropriate technique for many surgeons. Good way to start learning FACO. Just be careful in the way that you do the grooves. Understand the depths uh, of the eye and understand how big the cataract is, where it's denser and deeper centrally and shallower the periphery. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to review the video as many times as you need.